Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a closer look at Poppy Playtime, a creepy and mysterious new horror game set inside a haunted toy factory where it is said the employees mysteriously disappeared years earlier. We take on the role of one of the sole survivors, an ex-employee who left the factory before whatever tragedy befell the others. After receiving a VHS tape in the mail, alongside a note claiming the staff are still trapped within the factory, this ex-employee embarks on a journey to find out what really happened. Returning to the Playtime Company toy factory, where they discover a sinister truth. Huggy Wuggy and the other mascots have seemingly come to life and gone on a kill-crazy rampage. Currently, only one chapter of this episodic horror game has been released, so it's impossible to do a story explained video. However, I do have some theories coming soon. In the meantime, I wanted to take a look at each of the VHS tapes we can uncover during our adventures so far. There are six, including the introductory tape, so in this video we will watch each in turn, and then I'll give a quick analysis of the content thereafter. So sit back, relax, and let's start this mini-investigation. You are about to see the most incredible doll ever invented. Her name is Poppy, and she is the first truly intelligent doll in the world. A little girl can talk to her. Poppy gives her answers. She is the first doll actually able to have a conversation with a child. Hard to believe? Just watch. Poppy Playtime! Poppy's as lovable as a real girl, and she talks like one too. Hi, my name is Poppy. I love you. Can you help me polish my shoes? Why, of course, Poppy. Just like a real girl, Poppy always wants to look her best. Perfect! Thank you! Her hair is sturdy and won't come out when you brush it, and smells just like a poppy flower. Is there anything else you'd like to say, Poppy? I'm a real girl, just like you. What's the time? Playtime! And if you've ever wanted to see how all of the nation's favorite toys were created, Playtime Co. is now offering factory tours at just $2.99 a person. An entire hour in the most magical toy factory on Earth. What are you waiting for? Come visit the factory. We can... The introductory tape was mailed to our protagonist by an unknown sender. It seems to be an old infomercial for both the Poppy doll and factory where she was designed and assembled, the Playtime Company. Poppy was revolutionary, the first doll to ever talk back to a child when spoken to. It seems like the technology within Poppy gave her a personality all of her own. It is also stated tours of a factory can be purchased, giving customers insight into how this amazing tech was created. The mysterious man at the beginning of the tape seems to be Elliot Ludwig, the company founder. Currently we don't have a firm year for when Playtime Co. was founded, but judging by the age of this tape, and the date on the Make a Friend machine, it's safe to say this company dates back to at least the 1950s. The end of the tape contains strange footage of a giant poppy mural, and the note that accompanied the tape asks us to find the flower. The flower in question, a poppy. Tape 2 is easy to spot. In the opening area, approach the reception desk and you'll see it sitting beside the computer. It has the name Leif Pierre written on the label, and plays as follows. Hi. My name is Leif Pierre, and I'm the head of innovation here at the Playtime Co. Toy Factory. If you're seeing this, then you're trespassing. Yeah, we play this little tape on loop whenever we close the factory for the day. So, trespasser, just to make you aware, while we pride ourselves primarily on our high-quality toys and excellent child care, we also pride ourselves on our security. For example, this facility is full of hidden motion triggers, which once set off, we'll turn on the factory's emergency alarms and directly contact the authorities. And 
That's one of the more tame aspects of our security system. No spoilers. So, you've got my warning. It's not too late to turn around. I just hope that you're certain whatever you're doing is worth it. Leif Pierre is the head of innovation at the Playtime Company. He closely guards company secrets and technology, seemingly overseeing security measures throughout the factory. He warns us not only does the factory contain state-of-the-art conventional security, such as motion sensors and cameras, but also alludes to more extreme and unconventional measures as well. We can only speculate as to what these may be, but by the end of the chapter, we have a good idea. Tape 3 is unmissable and can be found on the desk to the left of the security office. It contains a tutorial for how to properly use the Grab Pack. This seems to be a tool used by employees for moving heavy objects around the assembly line as well as accessing secure areas about the facility. It even has the ability to tether electricity between conductors powering up areas when conventional wiring fell into disrepair. However, this technology was very dangerous, capable of ripping off a human head with ease, so the tape warns to be extra careful when using it around other workers. The fourth tape is yellow and located in the warehouse where we access the second hand unit. After opening the door here, which leads back to the yellow VCR player, turn around and you'll see it nestled behind the shelving units nearby. This tape is from storeroom worker Rich Avery, and plays as follows. Rich, where are they keeping the huggy boxes? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Remember when maintenance left in a sweep of this place? No. Exactly! Nobody in this stupid company knows what they're doing. Oh, I swear, I haven't seen a single box in its place since they started flooding the storehouse with orphanage junk. Right. I get it. It's a nice program. On brand. Uh, it's just hard to be happy about it when manufacturing's on our necks about it, because we can't buy stupid hockey boxes! Rich. Oh, you're right. You're right. It's. It's for the orphans. I just wish there were less boxes. Anything less would be more habitable. Is. Is that even a word? Habitable. This recording from Rich Avery is very informative. It tells us the following things about this company. Firstly that, as reinforced in other signage and recordings, it seems the Playtime Company did a lot of good for children in need. In this case, orphans, with toys being boxed up for delivery to them. However, these orphanage deliveries were flooding the storehouse and making life very difficult for workers such as Rich Avery. This also tells us many employees were disgruntled and not happy working at the company despite these charitable values. It seems like upper management valued the company brand and image far more highly than the comfort of those working at the factory itself. The unknown second voice on this recording seems to be trying to calm Rich down while saying as little as possible. We know this conversation was monitored, so this tells us certain workers were afraid to speak up aware security was always listening in. Tape 5 belongs to a character called Stella Graeber, and is one of the trickiest to locate. At the top of the stairwell in the Make a Toy Room, you'll note there's another VCR player. Now not too far from its location is a pullable walkway, but rather than crossing it to solve the third electrical puzzle, look to the right and you'll find a grabbable tape on the wall beneath. It contains the following audio. So, Stella, what made you want to work at the Playtime Co. Factory? Playing with toys when I was young was so magical. I could go straight from my bedroom floor to anywhere in the world. It was such a great feeling. And being able to work at a toy factory, somewhere that can provide kids with that same experience, that's a pretty great feeling too. Sometimes, though, I really, really wish I could go back. To being a kid, I mean. And it's weird, because adults are just kids, but older. I don't think anyone ever really feels like an adult. But your body just gets older and older, and then you die. Poof! 
Human bodies just can't stay young forever. There's things though, like some trees that can stay alive even while being way older than the person. I mean, the oldest people to ever live are still younger than those. So I guess everyone is always young relative to something. Right? Alright, I think we're getting a little off track. This recording appears to be taken from an interview with Stella, who applied for a position as a factory worker, presumably on the toy assembly line. She seems like a kid who never grew up, and fixated on the concept of staying young forever. Perhaps the right kind of impressionable mind to mould for whatever dark purposes Playtime Company had going on behind the scenes. We'll get to hear the ramifications of these sinister experiments in the final recording up next. The final tape has a very different tone, and is quite unsettling. It can be found in plain sight on this walkway before we enter Poppy's lair, just after escaping Huggy Wuggy in the ventilation shafts. The recording contains a mysterious voice and plays as follows. Final log in relation, experiment 1006 prototype. Coordination and cooperation is evidently within his skill set, as well as the skill set of all other experiments of his type. Though still missing, today's events are no doubt in relation to him. His absence was a flaw in the scientific process, which should have under no circumstances been left unaccounted for. That's why I'm making this log, so that the same mistake won't be made twice. Future experiments will need to be contained and disposed of in a secure location. I'm not worried about myself. One breakthrough and I'll be back. We must forge onwards in the name of science. Whether those who are beneath us understand it or not, end of. Now, judging by the screams in the background of this recording, it sounds as if all hell broke loose at the facility. The man speaking seems to be a lead scientist who has been involved in some very sinister experimentation and no doubt had a hand in the creation of the living, breathing and very murderous Huggy Wuggy we met ourselves. It seems this log was recorded after the experiment to create Huggy Wuggy succeeded. However, errors were made along the way, resulting in the monster running rampant and killing everyone in sight. This log also tells us that Huggy Wuggy was not the only experiment created, and that he is very intelligent, capable of both coordination and cooperation. It seems he was created to serve humans, but instead defied them. The scientist seems to have sealed himself away, ignoring the pleas of his co-workers who have been left outside to Huggy's mercy. Despite this horrific incident, the scientist seems more worried about how to continue experiments in the future, noting that any experiments must be created in a secure location going forward and then disposed of after. His recording is cut short early, leaving his fate unknown. And with that, we come to the end of today's video. Stay tuned as over the coming weeks I plan to make a few theories on Poppy Playtime and its mysterious lore. But for now I hope you found this video both entertaining and informative. If you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.